Hello everyone, my name is Martin Berdow from the University of Oldenburg and today I want to talk to you about non-intrusive prediction of speech intelligibility and listening effort in real time. So this is a very relevant topic for hearing aids where estimating speech intelligibility and listening effort can be beneficial for choosing the best algorithm for any given acoustic situation. So nowadays hearing aids are equipped with several hearing aid programs or algorithms and the idea here is to develop tools to select the best algorithm at any time in terms of highest speech intelligibility or lowest listening effort. However, current models are often offline or intrusive or know the old signal and do some acausal processing. So the goal here is to develop a non-intrusive real-time capable model that can be just run on any hearing aid device. So the idea of the proposed model comes from a work of Renis et al. from 2022, which was not implemented as a real-time application, but stated as theoretically possible, and now it is. And the whole model can be broken down into a binaural front end and a monaural back end. And as a front end, a non-intrusive real-time version of the binaural speech intelligibility model, in short BSIM, was used, which models the binaural hearing in humans by utilizing the two ear signals and outputs a binarily enhanced signal that is routed into the monaural back end. And as a back end, the so-called leap model was used, which, uh, despite the name, also predicts speech intelligibility besides listening effort. The reason for using the binaural front end is to model the effect of binaural masking, which describes the effect of a lower speech recognition threshold for spatially separated sources compared to co-located sources. And in a scenario like in the image, the target source and the interferer source carry different binaural views, which are interaural level differences due to head shadow effects and interaural time differences due to different time of arrival of the sound waves at the ears. And the front end model utilizes those cues for speech enhancement. The main idea dates back to the equalization and cancellation theory by Durlach and is quite similar to a delay and some beam former in each auditory filter band. The Bezen processing, which is done bandwise, consists of an equalization, cancellation and selection step. And in the equalization step, the binaural cues of one source are removed so that in the cancellation step, that source can either be enhanced by adding the equalized ear signals or suppressed by subtracting them. The former would be desirable for enhancing the target source, while the latter might be desirable for suppressing the interferer source. Afterwards, in order to select the best of those two approaches, an adapted version of the SMR is used, meaning whichever signal induces the highest SMR will be selected. Bands will then be summed up at the end, and that's our binarily enhanced signal which is then processed by the monaural backend, which uses posteriograms of phonemes from an automatic speech recognition system. So probabilities of occurred phonemes from which usually ASR systems can make a transcript and which look like this, for example, for clean speech on the left and clean, uh, speech and noise on the right. However, instead of making a transcript, the backend calculates a so-called M measure from the posteriogram, which takes into account the difference between consecutive posterior vectors and is then mapped to actual speech intelligibility and listening effort values. So the model will likely predict high speech intelligibility and low listening effort for clean speech conditions and vice versa, low speech intelligibility and high listening effort for speech and noise, especially for low SNR conditions. The version where this figure came from was done by a Hubert I. However, for the real-time model, a lightweight end-to-end -end version was used, which is a small neural network that was trained on the inputs and outputs of the original model. And this decision was done to make the model actually run in real time. So far, only preliminary testing has been done, as can be seen on this slide. Here, two speech sentences were used as a target in speech-shaped noise, used as an interferer, and they were mixed at different SNRs of 10, minus 10, minus 5, 0, plus 5, and plus 10 dB. The two sources were convolved with head-related impulse responses to simulate a setting where the target speech was presented lateralized to 60 degrees from the right and the noise interferer coming from 60 degrees from the left. In this case, listening effort predictions were observed where effort scale categorical units were chosen, which range from 1 indicating no effort to 13 indicating extreme effort. 
The backend was not only run on the non-intrusive front end in blue, but also on an intrusive version uh, in orange, as well as on the left and right ear signals in green and red. Using an intrusive version was done to showcase how good the front end would work if it knew the clean source signals, while running the back end on the ear signals was done to showcase the effect of the binaural enhancement done by the front end. So generally we can see that the intrusive version in orange uh, tends to produce uh, signals that cause the lowest listening efforts regardless of SNR indicating that the general approach by the binaural front end makes the target speaker more audible compared to the raw ear signals in uh, green and red. However, this uh, seems to only be true for low SNR conditions. If we compare the listening effort of the right ear, for example, with the um, one from the intrusive front end, um, from zero dB SNR and upwards, that's not a real big difference or not at all. And looking at the listening effort values for the non-intrusive model in blue, we can observe generally slight increases of listening effort compared to the intrusive model in orange, which is expected though, because it has to estimate the binaural cues of the sources from the mixture of speech and noise. And all in all, we have to remember that the goal of those models is not to induce the lowest listening effort by performing optimal speech enhancement, but rather to model listening effort as perceived by humans. Which is why those results will have to be evaluated by human participants eventually. Which will be done soon, because we are working on setups that allow us to track speech intelligibility and listening effort of participants so that we can correlate those results with the model predictions Besides, speech-on-speech -speech masking is still a big issue for the proposed model since the current version assumes noise interferers, so there's still work to be done in that regard. And at some point we might want to include hearing loss again, which was usually always included in the Beza model, which is used as the front end. But for now there's a real-time capable model that has been implemented as an actual application, as can be seen in the image here on the right. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention and I am looking forward for questions and remarks from the audience.